G'day guys, how are we going? Well, here we are, we're back again having a yarn the yarn with you guys Sunday night, having a chat. Um, Leanne's already on, so uh, assuming that uh, everyone can hear this all loud and clear and it's um, going to go all well tonight with uh, comments and all the feedback all coming through, it would be great to um, great to see. So um, hopefully it's all going through loud and clear. Um, so yeah, tonight's topic is going to be about four dry snow tracks in the Victorian eye country and where you can go. Um, to um, where you're not going to be affected by, you know, seasonal closures and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to get through a fair bit of this tonight and, uh, and then I'll finish off with a bit of a driving tip at the end of it. So it's uh, one you sort of got to think about as you're driving some of these tracks we're going to talk about tonight, but we'll get into it. G'day, Damien. G'day, mate. How are you? Shannon, how are you, mate? Thanks very much, guys, there for coming in tonight. So um, we'll get into this, but one I'll just show you this one map. Um, this one here, this... Jamison Lacola map is pretty much that rooftop one. Um, pretty much going to cover nearly all of the area we're going to talk about tonight. Um, there will be a couple of um, other spots sort of outside that map, but that Jamison Lacola map is pretty much going to cover all we're going to talk about with four dry snow tracks and where you can go in the modern Victorian eye country once we get out of lockdown. That is so that's not going to be far away. Um, g'day, Gary. How are you going there, mate? Coming in tonight from Dubbo. Good on you guys. Thanks very much. Touring Tyrong, Ash and Jack Full Driving. Thanks very much, guys, dropping in tonight. Righto. So um, we'll start with uh, that Mansfield over the Mansfield side. Now, unfortunately, there's not really a lot you can you can sort of do in Mansfield sort of side um, sort of directly. Um, you know, Craig's had all that sort of stuff sort of locked. But there's one really crack and drive that I have done a few times, providing um, they're pretty much – all of this too, if, they, if we're getting snowfalls, they're forecasting snowfalls under a 1,000 metres. This is where pretty much this whole list that I've got here is going to be really good for all these sort of low altitude sort of snow forecasts. So that Mansfield site, one that I've done a fair bit is um, head down through, out through Mansfield and down into Sheepyard Flat and then continue out of Sheepyard Flat along Brock's Road just keep going out. It's probably about another oh, half an hour, 40-minute drive. Continue on up through there, and you're going to slowly gain some elevation as you're going. But and then once you get up there, you'll, you'll go past the junction of, um, of Brock's Road or kick off to the right, and then Bluff Link Track will keep going straight ahead. Now, this is where it sort of all sort of starts from about this junction going through. But um, And you can go right through to where the um, seasonal gate is where Bluff Track starts. So that goes up to, you know, Bluff Hut and that sort of thing. And then um, not far, continuing on Bluff Link, about another 100 metres past that junction, there's another seasonal gate there, which you can't go any further past there. But sort of between that Brock's Road junction back further where, where Brock's Road goes off to the right and up to that seasonal gate, which I just mentioned there, that is a really nice snow drive going up through there if you get those low elevation sort of um, uh, forecasts with, with the snow. But there's one thing you really got to take into account if you're going to go and do this drive. Um, it's it's once you go past that that junction, as mentioned before, the the Brox Road and, and Bluff Link, um, it is a very narrow sort of a track. Now the problem with that is. If you get going up there and there's vehicles coming back the other way, it can get pretty dicey on, you know, on how you're going to get past each other until you sort of maybe get to refrigerator gap. Now, there's a big sort of open area there um, where you can sort of get around each other there. But the track itself up to refrigerator gap is pretty tight for trying to get past. And then the other drama too, which I've come and had this sort of issue happen, we are heading up there a few years ago and there was a group in front um that we're having issues on going forward now if if the, the problem with this one if you can't clear them out and help them get going again it's really hard to turn around and go back to until you get to at least that refrigerator gap so that's the only drawback with that but it is a really really good um driving in the snow if you uh, get those low elevation temperatures so keep that one in mind heading out through sheepyard flat it's a really nice drive all the way up to that seasonal gate closure uh, at, um, at Bluff tra Track there where it heads up to Bluff Hut. So keep that one in mind, but just take those few things that I sort of just mentioned that it is really tight and it can be issues getting past another vehicle if it's coming the other way. And then if, you know, you get a vehicle or group that's having some issues in front of you, getting them turned around or getting you turned around can be a real issue. So have a think about that one too. Um, and then other than that is uh, heading out through Jamison and then up over, you know, to Mount Terrible. 
the amount of terribles hits up there about 1100 odd and again if you're going to get those those low elevations under a thousand meters well you're going to generally get some reasonable sort of snow up on that mount terrible mount terrible track and up to mount terrible hut um up there and then you can take that mount terrible track all the way through it follows sort of the ridge line all the way through you can either drop off down into um out into woods point you want to go to the Woods Point pub or something for a bit of lunch, you can drop off down there or you can take it all the way through and come out sort of about Matlock um, and, you know, and do that drive all the way across the top there. And that will be all snow all the way through, right through to, to Matlock and, you know, and then you'll lose it a bit if you're going to stop sort of drop down into Woods Point. So that's another good one there to certainly think about. Again, all no worries during the seasonal gate closures. You can get up through there, no dramas at all. It's quite an easy sort of a drive, um, but it can be, you know, if it gets um, fair depth in the snow, well, then that's when you just got to be a little bit careful there. But it's a great snow drive, that one up through there, out, out through Jamison and, and get up into Mount Terrible Track. Really, really good drive out through there. Um, next one I've got is um, especially on my side of the range, at um, on the East Gippy side, uh, Mount St. Guinea. Now, Mount St. Guinea, if, if you're not sure where that is, it's um, heading out through... Um, heading as you're heading towards Walhalla, so you get go out through um, Rawson and Erica there, um, and then continue on to uh, to Mount St. Quinier. That's a really good drive there again if you're getting those low elevation snowfalls. Um, but the only thing with going up to Mount St. Quinier, you do have to carry snow chains. It is um, it is a free mountain. You can drive up there, no worries at all. There's no cost to get up onto Mount St. Quinier. But you do have to, it is a mountain where you must carry snow chains. It is patrolled by the parks guys and they do sort of um, clear that road a fair bit too. If the snowfall gets a bit heavy, they do have a dozer running up and down or a grader running up and down clearing the road so people can get up there fairly easy because there's a little bit of facility when you get up the top there at Mount St. Grenier. Um, there's a you know big room there where you can go into, a heated room where if you're getting a bit cold and you can go and sit in there. It's a great spot there. Uh, for kids, little toboggan runs got going on there. If you want to take the family up, it's a really, really good spot. And again, very easy drive up. But just remember that one. Um, you're going to need snow chains to do that once the snow season kicks in in a few weeks' time. Now, if you haven't got any, you can hire them from Erica Ski Hire. They've got snow chains and toboggans and all that sort of stuff going on there. So, you know, drop in there if you haven't got any snow chains and you can hire them from there for the day and then go up to St. Quinier and um, have a bit of fun up there for day and then, yeah, come back out. So there's another one there. certainly well worth checking out. Mark, how are you going there, mate? Good to thank you. Dropping in tonight. Thanks very much, guys. Um, yeah, it's all going off. Good to see some comments come through tonight. We're a bit light on. I couldn't see them last week. G'day, Cam. How are you going there, mate? Spent last week up at Mansfield area. That's a nice, nice area, mate. Really, really good. So um, and then the next one we'll get into um, is the sort of that Walhalla area. Now, there's not sort of a great deal of snow sort of around that Walhalla tracks, but one mountain that's really popular is um, is that Mount Selma site, that Mount Selma. Now, it's a very popular drive because it sits up there about 1,400 odd, and it does get a fair whack of snow, but thing with Mount Selma, it's it's one of those drives you really, I think, you only want to do if you're feeding them geared up for it. You've um, done a fair bit of snow driving because it, it does get very busy and the final climb to the top is sort of fairly steepish. So you want to, yeah, make sure you are geared up if you're going to do Mount Selma um, and go up there and uh, and that's another good drive in the snow, good good snow going on up there if they get into that sort of low elevation sort of stuff um up, up through there so mount selma is another good one but as i just be a little bit prepared if you um if you're going to go up there um another one now is uh, getting out through the lacola side and again this is all coming out of this jamison cola map that i showed you early on in the piece um and as you head out of lacola head up tambretha road um, and then from Tambretha Road, you get up to, you know, you've got Lost Plain up the top. Again, that's sitting up about 1,400 odd. And that's, you know, generally where the snow sort of get a good fair bit of snow up through there. Now, during the normal times, you know, this Tambretha Road is just a, you know, good dirt road, two-wheel drive road. But, um, but it is a, it does get a fair bit of snow on it as well. And it's open, seasonal open all year round, unless they do get a fair whack of snow. I think there was a few good few years ago they did sort of close that area up through there for a little while because there was a fair whack of snow come on that Tambretha Road and Maroka Road. Uh, so there's the, that's just what I think about that one too. But it's a really good drive. So you get down there to Arbuckle Junction and then you can, can continue on for a short way along Howitt Road up to the Seasonal Gate. And it's probably about oh, probably four or five k's 
up to the seasonal gate. You can drive as far as there and then you're going to turn around and come back. But that's not a bad little drive up through there. And then otherwise, yeah, coming back to Arbuckle Junction, um, you can hang, you know, head on to Maroka Road and take that all the way through to, you know, the Pinnacles and get up there, the Pinnacles, and, you know, generally there'll be snow all the way through there uh, for getting these low elevation falls. Um, check that out, and then, you know, you can do Billy Goats and down in Dargo if you want to sort of do a bit of a, a round trip. is certainly well worth having a look at that one. Um, and then the other one um, is over the other side, um, sort of that bright side, so the Buckland Valley. That's a really nice drive over there. Get up to Mount Sarah. I've done that a couple of times. Really good drive up through there. Again, they're all easy roads during summertime because they're just pretty much two-wheel drive roads, a lot of them, to get up through all that area there. But they do get a fair whack of snow. So another one there, good good driving to get head over that side over there. And check out some of that stuff because, um, yeah, well worth having a look at that Buckland Buckland Valley side and uh, and camping over there and um, get into some snow stuff going on on that side. So what's going on here? So um, Cam, yeah, camp at Sheepyard, Lake Cobbler, then King Hunt absolutely had a ball. Um, reckon we met Buttman, did you now, at King, King Hunt? The, yeah, that righto. I haven't uh, come across him yet, but um, maybe you have. Uh, Leroy, I'm heading uh, up around the Buckland in a couple well, weeks, yeah, fingers crossed. So hopefully, um, hopefully, mate, the, uh, you might get a bit of snow. There's nothing sort of in the short-term forecast, but, hey, if you're in Victoria, you can't travel anyway until hopefully in the next week. Uh, so we'll see how we go with all that. But, yeah, Buckland is a great side to um, get in and, and check some of that area out there. Uh, Simon, Mount Erica next door to St. Quinier is good too. Yeah, Mount Erica is also good. Um, but, yeah, that, that St. Quinier is a really nice drive. I've done that a couple of times because it's only just down the road for me. So... It's um, generally a an, an pretty easy one to get to and very easy accessible from Melbourne to get up through there. And um, but just so remember those snow chains if you're heading up there. Uh, Trev actually got caught, <coughs> actually caught one of your live feeds. Thanks very much, Trev, for dropping in tonight. Glad, glad you called it, mate. And then just a little driving tip I sort of want to throw in here when when you're driving, like all these ones I've mentioned, you know, like St. Um, those roads around La Cola and pretty much a lot of the Buckland, you know, there are, as I mentioned, you know, they are pretty much two-wheel drive roads any time of year. But where you've got to be really careful is driving these roads. If there's a fair bit of snow on the ground, there's generally one track gets made, and that's one track that wheels, one set of wheel tracks get made for going up and one set of wheel tracks get made for coming down. Now, where you've got to be super, super careful if you, you know, if you're in just that same set of wheel tracks that's going in either direction, is come around a corner and you got a car coming the other way in the same set of wheel tracks. Yeah, you, you could be in all sorts of drama there. So you, you've got to be super careful on, on these roads because they do get pretty popular. Some of these um, two wheel drive roads, and, uh, and you've got to be really careful of that that single lane sort of tracks that do get made. You know, if you can get out of them coming into corners, well, try and get out of them, and you know, so you can take them a little bit wide, but just don't go too wide because sometimes you're not quite sure where the um, where the edge is. So you've got to be a little bit careful about that too. And that's generally one reason why sort of one set of driving tracks gets made is, um, yeah, because sometimes it's a bit hard to know where the edge is. So everyone stays in the middle of that track, but yeah, you've got one track going up and one track coming down. And and sometimes these full drive snow tracks, when they're like that, um, yeah, it can be a little bit dicey. That's for sure. Uh, Bush Adventures, how are you there, mate? Um, here we go, buttons, button, uh, go up buttons uh, every time I go away with him um, and talk and talks about him. Everyone talks about him, but uh, you know, no one's just ever seen him though, but that's the only thing. Uh, Shannon, 114 watching, that's all good, mate. All going all right there. Hopefully, everyone's uh, getting some getting some value out of it because, um, because that's one sort of question gets asked a fair bit is you know, where can you go for a good snow drive? You know, get your full drive and go for a snow drive in the Vic High Country where you're not going to get affected by you know, seasonal gate closures and stuff like that. Well, all of the lists that I'll give you tonight and then that one map there, that Jamison Nicola map, none of those are, none of them are affected by seasonal closures unless they get, you know, an exorbitant amount of you know, big dump of snow and then sometimes, you know, they just might close some of those roads off and that's about, but that, that's about the only time. But apart from that, they are open for you to go and drive and have a cracking time in that snow country. Um. Do they make change for 35s? Um, the Piranha guys do down there at Bayswater. They will they make change, the Dom and uh, Dom and pattern change there. Uh, the GQ guy, have a chat with them, mate. Um, they're the change that I had last week, which 
actually it's still set on the floor down here. Um, they're the ones that I've got, but mine are for 33s. But yeah, you'll get a set for um for 35s down there, mate. So have a have a chat with them. Top quality and the best best chains are to get those um Dom Patton Snow chains, top notch. Uh Adam, smash that lock button. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Um, snow driving tips. Yes, that's with plenty of those going on there, JCV. Uh, Pilgrim Wanderer, I uh, hope it was all going well. Yeah, going all going pretty good. Thanks, mate. No dramas there at all. Uh, the GQ, uh, just the front tyres need snow chains. Yeah, look, we sort of take, talked about a little bit about this last week on, you know, which end do you put your snow chains on, front, rear, uh, talk about tyre pressure, that sort of stuff. So if you missed that one, the live chat from last week, just drop back and have a bit of a look at that one because, yeah, we've gone in a bit of detail there about, you know, which end to put your snow chains on and tyre pressures and, and all that sort of stuff. So have a, have a look at that one and see what's going on there. For that one might help you out. G'day, Ross. How are you going there, mate? Thanks so much for there for coming in and out, out and about. Thanks very much, uh, guys, there dropping in tonight. Uh, what's going on, Dazza? Uh, Melbourne playing finals foot in the snowy mountains. We'll be quiet. Yeah, well, it's going to be a little bit quiet with everything going on at the moment. So, um, yeah, we'll see. See how it all, all pans out going forward, though, mate. Uh, GQ, no worries, mate. Yeah, have a chat with those guys down there, mate, and um, they will get you a set of change for your 35s. No dramas at all and top top quality stuff. Uh, Land Cruiser, yes, uh, no two-rack tractors on Mount Buller. No, there won't be. Um, let's just hope uh, there's a snow season going on because it will actually it kicks off Queen's birthday weekend, which is only a couple of weeks away when, um, when it all, all starts. So, you know. So just have a, have a thing about that one too, especially with last week. I sort of talked a fair bit about stuff, um, you know, and times when you have to carry snow chains and when you must fit them and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, check back on that one too with uh, snow season officially starting in a couple of weeks' time. Um, no worries, Jed GQ. Check them out, mate. No worries at all. Adam, Land Cruiser, um, to Adam, what's, uh, what's a good one? I'm not sure about that one. Uh, John, Johnny, um, what are you going to do? Uh, what's that? Um what are you going to to buy after the patrol? Well, there's no after the patrol at this stage, mate. So I'm going to um, stick with the mighty G GU and uh, yeah, and, and see what see what happens, mate. But um, there's no plans to be replacing it at all anytime soon. So yeah, we'll see see how how it all pans out there, mate. Um, go okay, doctor, what, uh, go brother, how you going there, mate? Um, what additive um, called it in the in the tank in the snow country? Um, I did talk a little bit about that one last week too, but I've used the um, that winter formula is the one that I use. Um, yeah, so I've, I've used that for a good number of years and haven't had a drama with being using it. But, you know, like I say to, to anyone when I talk about those putting fuel additives, before you go throwing anything down your tank, um, check that it's suitable for your vehicle before you put any sort of additives in your fuel. The last thing you want is more dramas and it's not suitable for your vehicle. So check that one out too there, mate. Uh, Biggles, Melbourne supporters, drivers, yeah. <laughs> you won't find them, find them on the tracks. No, you probably won't, but um, we'll see what happens with all that. Uh, VK, what's going there, mate? Um, really good cooking episodes. Yeah, cheers, mate. There's plenty um, plenty of cooking stuff going on there, mate. Really do enjoy the old, yeah, bush cooking stuff. Really enjoy it, mate. It's going good. Um, Jess, um, uh, an option of Mount Skiing for snow driving. Well, yeah, Mount Skiing's sort of one that I didn't sort of mention there because, um, again, that that's, comes under the seasonal closure road, the one between La Cola and Jamison, and you're only allowed to drive that if you've got a a, a permit from uh, Full Drive Victoria, and it's generally only full drive clubs that get allocated these permits. And um, so don't go driving it um, if you haven't got a permit. It is quite heavily patrolled, that road, through... Uh, the, the police do patrol that one a fair a fair bit to um so people aren't driving it that shouldn't be on it so yeah Mount Skeen's a great snow drive if you can get involved in a in a club that's going up there and and lucky enough to get in in one but you do 100 percent need a permit to drive Mount Skeen once the snow season starts so that'll be Queen's birthday weekend and beyond so yeah keep that one well in mind and don't go driving it otherwise uh, Hayden um. Thanks to you. I've done Billy Goats. Yeah, it's good, mate. That's Solo. Loved it. That's good. Billy Goats. Uh, yeah, Billy Goat Bluff track, mate. She's a cracking ear up through there. Through the track's heading up towards awesome in Collingwood Spur. Yeah, Collingwood Spur is another, another great area. All that one over there. All great, great tracks, mate. Collingwood Spur and Randalls and Conway. 
yeah, good good area, mate, to to get in, and good you've um good you've finally gone over there and checked it out, mate. Thanks for that, that feedback there. That that's awesome. Um, replace a patrol never. Yeah, that that's about right too. At, at this stage, it's it's not uh not uh, up for um discussion at this stage. But hey, never say never. You just never know. Adam, patrol owners don't sell up. Not, not like Toyota. <laughs> Here we go. They're all coming out thick and fast now. But yeah. I'm going to stick with the uh, stick with the Mighty Patrol. It's going good at the moment, so um, we'll see what happens with it down the track. Um, Dazza Coates going there came into the convoy late, so sorry, that's all right, mate. I'd have covered it. Uh, where, where's the easiest place to take the kids to see snow? Uh, I'm not sure on what side of the um, what sort of Melbourne you uh, you live on there, mate, but um, probably the easiest place is that Mount Saint Quinier, I reckon. Um, which I spoke about a little bit earlier, just out of uh, if you're heading towards that Walhalla, so Erica. Um, Rawson area, that Mount St. Quinier is a really nice drive for to take the kids up and you can muck around with toboggans and that sort of stuff. But as I mentioned earlier also too, you've got to make sure you've got snow chains um, to get up on Mount St. Quinier. It is a free mountain again, but um, you do need snow chains to go up there once snow season officially starts, Queen's birthday weekend. But check out Mount St. Quinier, mate. It's an absolute cracking, cracking day out. Really good. Uh, Ross, do you really need to to change a, a factory um, Toyota snorkel for a safari? <laughs> Loads of conflicting answers to, on the net. I don't know, mate. I've, I've still got the standard um, genuine Nissan one on mine and never had a problem with it, mate. So, um, yeah, I'm sticking with that one. So, yeah, no dramas with that at all. Uh, oh, where are we up to? Well, 37's fit, fit my GU patrol with no lift. You'd be, um, I think you'd be struggling with that one, mate. Yeah, as long as you're not going to turn corners, you might be all right. But going around a roundabout with 37s on and no lift, I reckon you'd be ripping the guards out of it. So, um, yeah, as long as you're only going to go in a straight lines, you might be all right, mate. So, see so you go with that one. Um, see our shearing there. Um, just tuned in. That's all right, mate. Uh, put in 2H diesel in with my 85 series uh, Land Cruiser. Uh, what diesel stuff to put in your tank? Yep. Um, again, the one I do use is that winter formula. And again, just make sure it's okay before you go putting it down your tank, mate. Because the last thing you want is extra dramas if it's not suitable for your vehicle. So, yeah, so check that one out, mate. Uh, Donovy Wang, yeah, from John is, is another good one. Yeah, another easy, fairly easy one to get up to Mount Donovy Wang. Um, over that, that sort of Warburton side. That's not bad getting up up through there. Uh, Mark, the GU with a Toyota. <laughs> not a chance, mate. There's no way known. We have had this discussion before, mate, and there's no way known I'm putting a Toyota motor inside my GU. It's just not going to happen. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I know you're contemplating the thought, but, um, yeah, it won't be happening in my garage, that's for sure. Um, Land Cruiser, um, Toyota, we'll do a Cummins diesel conversion. Now, I have sort of thought about that. I have um, been doing a fair bit of um, looking into that, actually, and that if – I don't sort of like to, talking too too loudly about my old trusty ZD30 that's out there in the garage because as soon as you start talking bad things about it, that's when things start happening. But if uh, if it did come to that stage where it was a terminal, um, you know, problem with the old ZD30, that is the conversion I would potentially look at is um, of probably the four, four and a half litre um, diesel Cummins conversion. I reckon that would be an absolute – crack up because i've done a little, little bit of looking into um getting the you know if, if i because always i've always said i'll just put another zd30 back in it but a mate of mine works at uh, nissan head office and apparently you can't buy a um a zd30 crate motor anymore they're that they're they're pretty pretty much non-existent you can't get hold of them so going forward if i was going to do a conversion uh it'd be probably in that four and a half liter uh diesel cummings i reckon be an absolute crack up so that's where i'd be probably looking mate um, yeah, Mount Donovy Wang. Um, yeah, mate, Biggles, it does get a little bit crowded, as, yeah, because they are fairly easy to get into, that Mount Donovy Wang, over that Wolverine side. Yeah, it does get busy, mate. And same with St. Quinier. Um, you know, they, they do get fairly, fairly busy. Um, but one thing they, they do do, though, with that St. Quinier is they do run a grader up it to make it pretty easy for people to get up there because it's, it's really geared around, you know, um, for families and that, get up there with the kids and toboggan rides and get on that toboggan run and muck around up there. So, yeah, a few of them do do get pretty busy, that's for sure, mate, and that, that's certainly one of them. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Leanne, don't encourage anyone. That's what I reckon. Um, 
Adam, stop teasing me about the GU. Oh, look out, the old GU's kind of copping a bit of iron. It, it, it's going, it's go, still going good, though. It, it's going so damn good, the old, my old ZD30. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, Dazza, thanks for, uh, so I'm down your, your way. Mount uh, St. Guinea sounds good. Yeah, check that one out, mate. Um, yeah, very easy road to get up there. But just remember what I said about the snow chains. If you're going to get up there after Queen's birthday weekend, you will need to have snow chains in your vehicle. And I'm not sure if you missed, if you were here for the beginning of that, but you can hire snow chains from uh, Erica Ski Hire and Toboggans and all that sort of stuff if you're going to get up there with the kids. So, yeah, check that one out, mate. Well worth um, well worth having a look at for sure. 454 big block. Geez, now we're talking my old school motors. 454 big block. How cool would that be? But I think they uh, put a 454 big block in the patrol. I reckon the back wheels would probably come off the ground. So that probably with the weight of it. So we probably uh, probably won't be looking at that. Um, Danger flight. What's going there? Uh, which ZD are you running? All, all common rail. Yeah, mine's common rail, mate. Um, 2009 model. Yeah, common rail CRD. So yeah. Goes um goes no worries at all at the moment. So um we'll, we'll just keep it going. It's as strong as houses. It's running feeding them absolutely beautiful. There's a video coming up tomorrow night about a um little bit about a GU that's been a bit of work doing to it. So check that one out tomorrow night. Um a bit of a new one coming up. Adam, um my GU has never missed a beat. It tows a Toyota and it to tows a Toyota, however, but yeah. Same here, mate. Well, well, when I say mine is Mr. Beat, well, you know, the head went on it um, about 12 months ago. But apart from that, uh, it's all going good. So um, so there you go. So there's um, a heap of, you know, full drive snow tracks you can go and do in the mighty Vic High Country um, once this snow really gets kicking off. Um, and, um, and and none of them are affected, you know, as we mentioned earlier on, they're not affected by seasonal gate closures. So you can get up there with confidence on all that, that whole list we've sort of spoken about, um, unless they do get, you know, some big dumps of snow where they might shut them a little bit early. But apart from that, yeah, you can get up to all of those spots and, uh, and, and check them all out because, yeah, great, great fun. That's for sure. Uh, Stubby, you love the content. Uh, let's do another another cook up, maybe a spit over the fire. Yeah, that would be um, no worries. We um, greatly appreciate the feedback there. Great, glad you're enjoying all the content. That's good, mate. Uh, yeah, Mark, um, loving the work and learning something every with every video. That's good, mate. Greatly appreciate that, and I'm um, glad you are uh, finding the um, the videos that are coming through. Find them helpful, mate. That's that's good stuff. Uh, with your Triton, your two inch lift and thirty threes. Yeah, that's no worries. Two inch lift and thirty threes, mate. Plenty big enough. It's all you really, really feeding them need. Um, unless you're going to go to some really extreme, um, crazy stuff, then you might want to go bigger tyres again and bigger lift. But apart from that, 33s and 2s, plenty all you need. Um, Bush, how, how do you know know if you're, you're going to see snow when when you're up there in, in, in and it's hard to find good snowfall? Well, I just, you know, any, any of those snowfalls, if they're going to start talking anywhere under a 1,000 metres and you, any of those areas I've mentioned, you're going to be pretty much guaranteed you're going to get snow on one of those. Um, but that um, Weather Zone app is the one that I monitor all my weather, whether it be summer, winter, whatever it is, and uh, that's got really good feedback there on um, on uh, where to get, what the snowfall is going to be doing. And I, I look at sort of the higher peaks. So, you know, I've got Mount Buller, Mount Hotham, Falls Creek, I got all of those sort of um, as um, sort of saved in my, my search thing there, so I can look at the weather forecast for any of those high peaks, and tells you exactly what's going on. And I find it really, really accurate. So, weather zones well worth checking out if you're looking for a good app to um, to see what the snowfalls and they're going to be doing. But other than that, you can look get on even get on those on on the um, you know the websites of those mountains and check out the snow cams, and you can have a look from there. There's a really good snow cam that runs 24 hours, uh, 24 seven up on Mount Hotham. And you can just log into that, and it sort of just pan pans around, and that's a really good, uh, you know, cam to have a look at. You can, you can look at it any time of year, like even during summertime, you can have a look at it as well. But so that one on Mount Hotham's a, a good one to have a look at if you haven't uh, don't know about that one, haven't seen that one. Um, go easy on the two rack tractors here. Uh, the Bluff uh, and King Billy's meeting Charlie Lovick along the way. That would have been pretty awesome to catch up with Charlie, if you, especially if you caught up with him there at Lovick's Hat. That would have been uh, a, a pretty amazing experience. We had a few uh, chats with Charlie over the years, and he's got some amazing stories to tell of um, of history from, from his days as a young fella growing up in the high country with cattle and stuff like that. So you're really, really good. 
Um, Alex, uh, what's on what's what's on uh, on Monday night? Tomorrow night, um, video um, about uh, GU Patrol. Very very clean, actually. GU Patrol, probably one of the cleanest GUs I've uh, seen for a fair while. Uh, come in for a for a big intercooler up, uh, upgrade and yeah, big hole cutting the bonnet and <laughs> bigger scoop and all going on sparks flying. It's a yeah, good old video. So that one will be up tomorrow night, and then the following week, oh, I should have another travel video up. Um, so we'll see how that one goes uh, for Monday week. And hopefully by then, we're back out on the road again and hitting some tracks by end of next week in, which would be pretty good. Uh, I need, need to use more garlic in your cook-ups. No, mate, I think I'm using plenty of garlic. I don't need any more of that going on, that's for sure, even though I do, do like the stuff. But the only thing I don't do it yet is um, probably spread it on my toast. But apart from that, I do like garlic on my cook-ups. Ah. Uh, it's going there, Jade. Only only patrol owners ever seem to talk about engine conversions. What does, does that tell you? Well, every everything's um everything's always sort of uh you know got a use by date, I suppose, and especially when they get high Ks on them. You just never know. But at the moment, it's not happening. So we're gonna stick with me mighty Z D30 and, and see where it goes from here going forward. Uh Adam, uh Jade Gibson, um that that brake and en engine towing, uh, yep, Morano. No worries, mate. Um, Bush uh, Adventures there. Thanks um, for dropping in there tonight. Greatly appreciate that. Awesome stuff. Right, oh, well, um, we might wrap this one up. So there's some uh, good list of four drive snow tracks. You can go and drive mighty Victorian high country when that snow falls and when we can go and travel again. Check that list out. Get that one map there, that Jamison Nicola map, and that'll cover pretty much a lot of the area we've spoken about. And, uh, and get out there and ha have some fun. But until next week, guys, Thanks very much for tuning in. Great feedback coming in there. Love it. It's uh, yeah, good having a chat with you guys. And uh, we'll see you all maybe next week. Good on you guys. Thanks very much. Catch you later on. Have a good week. See you then. Uru.